Hey guys, it's Eric here at Farpoint Farms. What an interesting few weeks it has been in my life. If you've been following the channel, I live in Western North Carolina and much of my community was destroyed in somewhat historic flooding. As a result, I am forced to walk back and think about the things I would have done differently during this event. And what's really weird is that I had actually ordered this before the storm. Winter is coming here in the mountains and I wanted my wife to have the ability to kind of get home. And that's what this is. It is a survival backpack from ReadyWise. Most people refer to stuff like this as a get home bag. And while this is something that you can buy off the shelf like this, there are a lot of different versions. If you have a backpack laying around, you can actually make something like this. But this one kind of seemed interesting on the website, so I went ahead and ordered it. We're going to go ahead and open this thing up and take everything out of the box. It says it has 64 items in it. We're going to find out if that's the case or not. And uh, we'll go through it. So here's the backpack. Yeah, 64 pieces, it says. Here's the backpack. It is nylon, you know, think of like a, gosh, I'm about to date myself hugely here, but Jansport is the brand that I can think of when it comes to backpacks. That or the uh, the military ones, but I don't, definitely not, not going to be like a LBE gear, which is what I was used to using back in the day. But it does have a nice grab handle here. It's also padded. Uh, these parts here, which also are padded, the back... Can't tell. Yeah, a little bit of padding there. And there's some adjustments to that as well as a center strap. So pretty decent. It also has like a little spot here. You could put a bottle of water or whatever in there. And then it has, we'll go ahead and open up the bottom one. Oh, okay. It also has that. So you could strap additional stuff that way. These are adjustable as well. And we'll open up this bottom pouch first. It contains absolutely nothing, but I would say it's the size of an average purse. My wife's purse is about that big. Another packet here. Also, this is empty. This one's pretty narrow. I mean, you could put some stuff in it, but there's not a ton there. Oh, I see what we got here. That's for a uh, water pouch. Hydration. You can see the little hole right here for putting uh, you know, your straw through, drinking straw through. Zippers feel decent quality. This is a little nylon cord here to that's adjustable so you could also strap more stuff. So I give them credit, the backpack itself certainly has a lot of spots on it. And then it looks like there's one more spot here. Yeah, this is a pretty good size. Also, I'd say probably a cork maybe a bigger, but again, about the same amount as a purse would have in it. And all these have two zippers, which is nice. So if one happens to fail, you've got a backup there. All right, the main one here up on top. Oh, wait. No, I'm wrong. There's another one here. There's another one here. Boy, this thing, I'll give them credit. There's a lot of baggies here. So this one goes all the way down. And that's just got a single zipper. But this, this pouch here goes all the way to the bottom. It is massive. And it is. there's nothing in that either. <laughs> and then we have another one. And I want to point out, too, the main one, the zipper is kind of hidden. It, it covers over itself. See that? So we'll go ahead and open that up and we'll start taking all the stuff out of here. And this one zips the bag pretty much in half, it looks like. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, let's get everything out of the box here. Now it looks like something's been leaking. There's a little bit of dust in the bottom here. I don't know if you see that in that corner there. We'll figure out what that is or was. But yeah, you can see the padding back here. <laughs> and of course, there's actually yet another bag or another zippered compartment here, really thin. Put your keys, your wallet in there, I guess, something like that. Cool. Well, let me put that down on the ground and uh, we'll start with this one. It's a, a bag inside of a bag. It's sealed, so I won't open it all the way up, but it is purified water, SOS Food Lab, emergency drinking water and manufactured by the SOS Food Lab in Helena Gardens, Florida. Drink a minimum of two bags per person per day for uh, marine emergencies. Drink water as needed on land based on emergencies. Avoid conditions which cause sweating or increase thirst. 
and discard bag if air or water escapes when squeezed. So that is how they're keeping these things from um, going bad. You know, water is kind of weird when you store water. If it has been open to the environment, it is going to get bacteria in and it's going to go bad. We are blessed to have fresh water here at the house, you know, with or without power. But if you're going to buy bottled water, that stuff is bottled. And I, I believe they use nitrogen when they seal all that stuff up. It's in an environment so that bacteria that is naturally going to be in the water doesn't have a chance to take hold. So these packets here are apparently sealed under conditions where they can't, you know, they can't give you anything nasty. It says um, expiration date on these is 12 of 26. So it was bottled in 12 of 21 or pouched in 12 of 21. And there are one, let's see here, one, two, three, four, I think there's six all together. One, two, three, four, there's either five or six. I think there's six in here. And uh, I wonder I know how many ounces it is. It doesn't show. Certainly not as big as a bottle of water. I would say probably six ounces is what I'm going to guess. But that's kind of unusual. They don't have that. They don't have that listed. But made in the USA, which is good. Cool. All right, well, I'll set that aside. Now, these other ones will open all the way up. I guess I'll go into this one first here. The only reason I'm not opening that up is because it's double sealed and I want to protect those packets um, both from the air and from uh, accidentally poking one of them. Okay, and now these are uh, Ready Right food packs. And we'll just go through here and I'll lay them out. We'll go through and show what each one is. Looks like one of them may be punctured. I'm, I'm getting a little bit of dust, you can see. Yep, this one has some damage to the uh, seal on the bottom there. So, all right, <clears throat> ready wise, it says here. And the entrees, uh, of course, well, I won't go through all those because there's more than that, but it does have cooking directions. Bring four cups of water to a boil, stir in the contents of the pouch, uh, cover, turn, and heat. Occasionally let stand 15 minutes and then eat it up. So, there you go. What this particular kit comes with, and I'm not sure all of them do, creamy pasta and vegetables. And this was made in 5 of 24, so it's October of 24 when I'm filming, so pretty recent. Apple cinnamon cereal. Brown sugar and maple multigrain cereal. That's a lot of that. Southwestern rice and beans. Whey milk alternative. Not sure. This is just a flavored drink there. And the last one is hearty tortilla soup. Just to add water. Uh, this is the only one that has any kind of actual uh, stuff on here, but it's, it's 32 carbs per serving, four servings per container. I would imagine that's about the same for all of these. Dietary fibers, three grams. Sugar is only one gram. That's nice. I'm looking for sodium, but uh, I'm not seeing sodium listed on here. Oh, yeah, here we go. Sodium is 660 milligrams, 29% of your daily intake. A lot of times these are going to have a lot of sodium in them. They're a preservative, and they also are a flavor additive, too. So, Ingredients on this one, pre-cooked rice, niacin, a bunch of preservatives there. Wow, a bunch of preservatives. <laughs> Dehydrated vegetables would be tomato, corn, cilantro, jalapeno, sea salt, modified food starch, spices, black bean flour, and a couple of dyes. So, uh, a lot of preservatives. I was going to see, nah, it just doesn't, just doesn't tell you a whole lot other than uh, what's in them as far as that goes. So, I guess you have to go online and, and look up each meal if you want to figure out what it has on there. All right, let me get that kind of over here. This one here, which is the creamy pasta and vegetables. Since it is a damaged container, I will eat that one. And then we have like a little uh, SOS bag here. So this has got the stuff that we're going to use to get home. And let's see what we got. These Ziplocs are also good in an emergency if you're not aware of that. Collapsible camp stove. Small. I believe I have one of these. Oh, yeah, I got one of these. These are great. I actually have these in each of our car. Except for my wife, so now hers will have one too. Yeah, these are great. You set it up like so. 
and uh, you get fuel tabs and you put the fuel tabs on there and if your cup is a different size you just angle it like so and so you're able to do some cooking right like that and, and it works really well so that's it's a good setup yeah these things they're not very expensive but they work really well and I uh, you know I wouldn't say they're disposable but they certainly they don't cost a ton so if you have to dump one it's not a big deal 39 piece first aid kit 10 plastic bandages, 10 uh, larger plastic bandages. Ones are three, and the other ones are inch and a half wide. Two gauze pads, three alcohol cleansing pads, one butterfly closure, 10 cotton tips, and three antiseptic cleaning wipes. Right there. And always good to have a little first aid kit in the car. And what we have here is an emergency blanket. Reflects almost 100% of body heat. Water and windproof. Remains elastic below freezing and small enough to fit in your pocket. If you've never used these, these actually do work really well. I've been on a camping trip where I brought a summer weight bag. And it ended up being extremely cold. And I was able to take one of these, wrap myself in it, and stuff myself back in the bag. And the difference in temperature was just incredible. They're just reflective mylar. This is 140 centimeters by 210 centimeters. It says destroy after use, single use only. Hmm. Helps against hypothermia. Simply wrap around bottle, leaving uh, body leaving face uncovered. So these things do work. I do. We have again. These are in my truck and in my uh, station wagon. As you can get into a blizzard and get stuck out here, and then you're spending the night in your car, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. All right, here's our hexamine fuel tabs. They're uh, Military grade fuel tabs. I've got a bunch of these I bought at uh, gun shows and whatnot. These things burn beautifully. And so enough to heat four meals is what it looks like. So that's kind of nice. And those pretty much, they don't they don't really go bad. Um, sometimes they'll deform or they'll get a little bit like liquidy. I don't know, not liquidy, but like, yeah, a little tacky or sticky. But it doesn't affect the ability for them to work properly. So they, they just burn. So that's that. What else we got here? Oh, cool. A squeeze dynamo flashlight. So an emergency flashlight requires no batteries. And there you go. And then what is this? this is the release here? Yep. Here's the release on the back. And So you can pump that thing up and continue to have it, and then it charges the battery. Okay, that seems silly, but that actually is a good idea because you put these things in your car, you forget they exist, and then the next time you go to use it, and it is non-functional because the batteries have gone dead or worse yet the batteries have gone dead and they have corroded it and ruined it for any use ever in the future this not needing any of that probably not a bad idea actually probably probably a pretty cool setup to have is it super bright absolutely not no way and lastly uh, emergency poncho poncho uh it says hooded poncho lightweight reusable one size fits all these things weigh nothing and that's part of like this stuff here is none of it weighs a lot it, you know the food and the water uh probably equal in weight just because all dehydrated stuff that a poncho man have you ever been stuck in the rain ponchos sir are nice to have and you know you could use a trash bag for a makeshift poncho but it, they're never going to work as well as something like this so that's very cool to have and it actually does appear to come with an n95 or kn95 mask which is good, forest fire, stuff like that. You're going through there or, you know, there's a lot of reasons you'd want to wear a mask. And then it looks like maybe a trash bag. Yeah, there's just a little trash bag here. And this also would act as a waterproofer as well. So you could wrap anything in your bag if you needed to, if it was raining out. And, oh, we got some other stuff here. Aqua tabs. I was wondering about this because the amount of water there versus the amount of water needed to make one of these packets doesn't line up at all. But now I understand what we got here, and that is this. Aqua tabs are purification tablets, effective against guardia, cysts, bacteria, and viruses. Water is ready to drink in 30 minutes. And let's see here as far as how much this is going to make. 
directions for use. Okay, let's see, because there's one, two, three, four, five little tablets here, which is about what the military stuff gave for a canteen. I'm wondering if this is 0.75 liters. So remove aqua tablet, put it into um, one fifth of a gallon, 0.75 liters of contaminated water. Mix well for at least 10 minutes, allow to stand for 30 minutes, and the treated water is now ready for drinking. So I bet these are the exact same tablets. Oh, there's actually two, so there's 10 of these. So uh, two gallons of drinkable water, we'll say, roughly out of this packet here, which is really nice. Cool. Waterproof matches, 40 of them. And uh, those are, the way you make a waterproof match, if you weren't aware, we used to do this in Boy Scouts too, is you take a match like this and you dip it in wax and that creates a seal so that the the wood to that point that is dipped which looks about a quarter of the way down here on this one and the sulfur, the, the striking part there will stay dry. And of course when you scratch it along the edge of the container here it's going to burn that wax off or scratch that wax off really quickly and then it lights. Alright, we're getting down to it now. Let's see what we got here. A five-in-one function whistle. It's a whistle. It's a compass. It's a signal mirror. It's a capsule, and it is a flint. This looks like something I would have had when I was in the Scouts. And it's got a thing to go around your neck as well. All right, it's a whistle. Yep, it's definitely a whistle. And it is a compass. And it is a working compass, so that's good. You know, sometimes the, like I have uh, those Rothko survival knives and the compasses on those were somewhat uh, questionable. And inside here, we have a rubber proof or waterproof area inside of here. And there is a place we could put our matches in there if we wanted to, or we could store other stuff in there. And then lastly, we have a small mirror to signal. And uh, before you laugh at the idea of a signal mirror, Someone right here in our community was saved uh, after being stranded by using a mirror to signal a passing helicopter that he was stranded and needed assistance. And it, it works. So even here in the modern era, when you need it, you need it. Yeah, we get rid of that. Cool. And then we have uh, some tissues. Now you can say, well, what do we got this for to blow your nose now? But for the other part of our body that sometimes needs to be cleaned. And lastly, uh, pretty cool, we got ourselves some playing cards. Again, so mental health is as important as regular health, and having cards and having distractions like that to keep morale up is super important. And we saw that here for the last three weeks with um, no power and with limited resources and a lack of information, that the ability to keep a positive outlook really makes the difference in one's life. And the last little piece of this is our little mug here, which we can heat our stuff up on, drink water out of, and um, and cook these meals partially. You would, you can't cook this whole thing in here, but you could, you know, separate that out and cook it with a fuel tab and have a nice meal out of it. So here it is. It's the survival backpack from ReadyWise. It's interesting. Uh, up until this point in my life, I've made my own. You know, I've used old backpacks and just put a couple of MREs and stuff like that into them and fill them out the way I would. Would I say that it's going to be the right backpack for everyone? No, no, no. There's definitely some holes in this. There's definitely some places you could probably make improvements. But if we look at this backpack, there were plenty of places to add improvements. What I will say is it seems like a pretty good start to a really good kit. And for somebody who's just getting started and maybe is now concerned after all the news about Florida and, uh, and Hurricane Helene and, and Hurricane Milton and just being ready in general, it looks to me like this is a great little option for you to just take and throw in the back of your car and forget about until hopefully you never need it. But if you do need it, this certainly is a whole lot better than nothing. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to have it. I'm going to add some stuff to it and, um, and then throw it in the wife's car. I will leave a link to where you can get one of these things and uh, I'll see you next time, my friends. Take care.